history. What history? You choose, it's your history, to preserve it or to lose it. That's my message. Thomas S. Monson said that we should learn from the past, live in the present, and prepare for the future. Keep that in mind. I, I love books. I love books. So I, I brought my protective little box here today, um, and I brought a couple of favorites here. I put on my white gloves because, you know, the uh, oils on your hand uh, get on the pages of old books, and uh, so you have, to, you have to be a little bit careful. Um, I also like to uh, wrap them up in acid-free paper so they survive a little bit longer. Um, this, this is a nice one. Too bad you guys up front aren't a little bit closer. Maybe you could read the date, or maybe you can. Can you guys up front read the date on this? Uh, let's see. When was this book uh, printed? Right down here in the bottom. 1834. That's older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's a lovely little book. I, I love this little book. Uh, here's another one I, I like also. Um, this one's a little bit newer. This is the third edition, and it came out in 1898. Um, books. But what I like about the books is... I love the ink on the paper. I love the letters that form words and the words that form sentences and the sentences that form paragraphs. The paragraphs make chapters. And then these are strung together in a sequence. You, you'll have an introduction. You'll have a body of the text. You'll have a, a conclusion. The index usually is at the back. So, so books are, books are lovely, uh, lovely uh, things to, to have uh, and to enjoy. It's something you can touch, you can feel the, uh, uh, the books. I just, I, just, I just love these books. Well, back to history. A little-known archaeologist said, the history we study is not what actually happened but what got recorded through words, pictures, or structures. Well, um, history is recorded, yes, in some of the books, but also it's, um, it's recorded in the things that we create and we use, the tools that we use, the buildings that we uh, live in and learn in and uh, enjoy, these are part of our material culture. It's part of what surrounds us. It's what we anthropologists refer to as material culture or cultural resources. Cultural resources. Now, God gave us natural resources, but humans gave us cultural resources. And these cultural resources are the things that uh, we surround ourselves with and that we use and that we... Uh, uh, we enjoy so much. <clears throat> I love I love ink on paper so much. Look at this. I even wrote my thoughts and notes here. Yes. Well, um, we, let, let's go back a minute to these uh, to these books that I love. It's it's not just random words. They're strung together in a certain way, just as our history is strung together in certain ways. But sometimes the present comes in conflict with the past. I think of an example down on Rochester Road, just south of Avon, on the east side of the road. There was a beautiful example of a 19th century farmstead. And a farmstead is the whole complex that produces the food that we eat. Beautiful example but a developer came along. Rochester Road, a lot of people, a lot of traffic. Hmm, I could make another strip mall there. This is what we need. So he bought the, he bought the property, and he went in, <coughs> he went to the planning commission and said, I'd like to develop this area. Here's an idea. 
he, um, he got permission from the planning department. And the first day after the evening meeting said, you've got it, <coughs> he went in. He tore down the hay barn. He tore down the corn crib. He tore down the chicken coop. He tore down the machine shop. He tore down the pig pens. But he did leave this beautiful, big, two-story white mansion in the back. She's nodding her head. Yes, I remember that beautiful building. But he saved that big building because he named the housing development behind it. He gave it a name, Edgington Estates. Hmm, nice name. Nice name. But what he did is he had taken the history book of our local history. And then when he went in, he said, well, I don't need that chicken coop. I don't need that, or I don't need that hay barn. Yeah, I'll throw that one away. Oh, yeah, I don't need that. He, he ended up actually taking uh, the house itself, and he left it unattended for about four years and left the uh, water pipes on, but he turned off the heater, and so what happened? The pipes broke, and it, it was just terrible, and people couldn't uh, stand to live there. He was ripping the pages out of the history book. I really feel sorry for him. I think he's going to burn in a very hot place. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, some of these pieces will survive in museums or collections or antique shops, but they lose their context. They're little words. They're no longer sentences and paragraphs and thoughts that really come through. Um, I recognize that we cannot save everything, but could we at least save a sample? Um, I love nature, too. And when I experience or see a forest fire, I am truly saddened. But then I think, wait 300 years, and it'll grow back. But when you destroy non-renewable cultural resources, like the barns and the houses and the factories, they are gone forever. So the message comes back, really. History. What history? You choose. It's your history. Preserve it or lose it. Thank you.